morning, brothers and sisters. It's great to be here with you all this morning. Before we begin with our musical worship, I wanted to share a verse with you that I stumbled upon this week. It comes from Psalm 136, verse 26, and it says, Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let us be reminded of how wonderful, mighty, and great our God is, and that his love endures forever. And let us praise him with our songs of worship together as a body of Christ. I 
stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful in my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and in glory his face I at last shall see it will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me singing how shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me Out, I 
Church, let's pray together. Our gracious Father, we thank you for giving us a wonderful day to worship you. Uh, even though we cannot meet physically together, um, we pray that you will help us to worship you in a united heart. Heavenly Father, we particularly want to pray for those families who are undergoing difficult times. We pray for those who have our family members who are in the hospital or who are sick or who is going to be admitted to the hospital. We just pray for these families. We pray that uh, you will help those who are sick and you will comfort our heart. We know that in life, we have to face different challenges, but we need your presence to help us to survive this uh, difficult moment. Lord, we pray that you will also help those families uh, in financial needs. Those families who are undergoing like a difficult moments instead of the lack of resources we pray that uh, you will just give us enough to survive these uh, difficult moments we also pray for those and we we are so grateful that you have given us uh, to those of us who was not being impacted so much uh, who still have a job who still have uh, enough uh, money to uh, live our daily life. We pray that you will continue to encourage us to share the love of Christ in action to our neighbors and to our brothers and sisters. Lord, we also pray for all the families whose children are learning at home. We pray that you will empower all the parents so that we will take up um, the teacher role at home in both spiritual matters and also in, in school subjects. And we pray that the children would have fun and also uh, the children would be able to learn what they have to learn at home. For those who also need uh, different resources online or like physical resources uh, to facilitate the learning. We just pray that you will help us to, to overcome 
uh, these challenges. Lord, we also would like to lift up our children pastor, Pastor Joanne, uh, who is going to speak to us in a moment. Uh, we give thanks for her calling. You have called her to a full-time ministry and you have also led her to MCBC. We give thanks for that. May you continue to mold her and give her all the spiritual gifts that she needs in order to minister to our children and even to our parents. And we pray that uh, her addition to the pastoral team will continue to strengthen the entire pastoral team uh, to uh, minister to the entire church in this uh, very uh, historic moment. Lord, we thank you again for giving us this uh, wonderful opportunity uh, to pray and to get close to you. We also would like to pray for the offering that we are going to uh, make. Uh, we pray that you will continue to help the leaders to make good use of the money uh, so that your kingdom ministry will not be hindered by the COVID-19. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, in a moment on the screen, you will see the instruction for offering. At this point, there are two ways uh, that you can uh, offer uh, your money to MCBC for Kingdom Ministry. Uh, number one is the e transfer, which, uh, which I think would be the easiest way. And the second way is uh, more traditional, so you can write a check and then mail in the check uh, to our physical address. So I encourage you, uh, even though we cannot meet on, uh, we cannot meet physically together, uh, but uh, we are still like the church as a whole, uh, still uh, is still running, and um, we need your faithfulness uh, in offering in order to make sure that uh, the gospel ministry will not be hindered. Welcome once again to MCBC's online service. I'd like to give a special welcome to the kids that have joined us this week. Some of them, the ones whose parents are already a part of MCBC's Children's Ministry Facebook page, have already met me. But I know that for many of you, this is actually the first time that you're seeing me. So, hi, I'm Pastor Joanne, and I'm MCBC's new children's pastor. I started here four days before we decided to move church online for the time being. So that's why I haven't been able to say hello in person yet. But once we get back to the building, I'd love to meet you all. Today's passage is Psalm 77 verses 1 to 15. And um, I'll be reading it for you guys, um, but it will also be on your screen. So feel free to read along with me. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O oh God, and I groaned. I mused and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. 
Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for gathering us together once again. Despite the fact that we can't be in the building, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together, to hear your word together, and to spend time in prayer together. I pray that as uh, this service continues to progress, that you would open up our ears to see what you have to say to us and open our hearts that we might receive your words gladly and put them into practice. I pray that despite difficult times that you would continue to encourage us and help us to encourage each other and um, may your spirit guide us um, in each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I've got a question for you guys. How many of you have been scared or frightened or worried in the last couple of weeks? I know I have. Um, maybe it's because you're feeling sick or someone in your family is. Maybe it's because you or someone in your family has lost a job or might be in danger of losing one. Maybe it's because you miss seeing all your friends from school. Maybe it's because you miss going to school and you don't know when you're gonna be going back. Maybe it's because it seems like all we see and hear on the news is about this disease over which we have no control. Maybe it's because of something else entirely. We know that we're not supposed to worry because that's what the Bible tells us, but that doesn't stop us from being scared. We still feel helpless and alone um, in these times, and we wonder where God is at times like this. This isn't a new situation. Psalm 77 actually speaks about a time very similar to this one. The psalm starts with the author in a highly emotional state. In verses 1 to 4, he's crying and he's groaning in distress. It's not a whimper. It's very, very, very vocal, and it goes on for a very long time. To cry and to groan is to be vulnerable and exposed. It's to admit weakness, and no one likes to be weak. But it's also honest and raw. It's being real with God, who already knows exactly what we're thinking and how we're feeling. And to hide it would actually be to lie to God. In his emotional state, the author of Psalm 77, um, he actually remembers God but even when he remembers God, he still can't find the peace to sleep. And in verse four, he says that he is too troubled to speak. Sometimes words fail us. We feel in ways that we can't explain, or sometimes something is bothering us, but we don't know exactly what it is that's bothering us. And that's okay. In Romans 8, it says that sometimes we don't know what we should be praying for or how to pray for it, but the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. God already knows what we're thinking and how we're feeling. So we could even go blah and God would understand. The psalm continues with the author thinking about happier times, and then in verses seven to nine, 
the author stops talking about himself and instead he basically turns around to God and asks, where are you? God, where are you? Where is God when we're suffering? Why doesn't it feel like God is responding to us? Sometimes it feels like God no longer cares, no longer cares about us. At the same time that he's ranting and railing to God, the author also mentions things like God's unfailing love, his mercy, and his compassion. He knows that these things are true of God, even if he doesn't feel them in that moment. In verse 10, we have what I like to think of as a sort of switch in the author's brain flicking on. He has an aha moment. After pouring out his emotions, after questioning where God is, he thinks back. These are my photo albums, some of them. I've got lots of memories in there. And I'd like to share some of them with you. So in this picture, um, I, well, this is a picture of something I don't actually remember. Um, this is actually a picture of the first time I realized that I had hands. Um, I clearly don't remember that, but when I go through my pictures with my parents, my parents will tell me about times like this, and they're kind of helping me remember these things. I have other pictures like this one, where um, I don't remember the memory until I see the picture. And uh, that was a picture of me. I was just under three years old. I decided to stick cotton balls on my face. Um, and I used lotion to do it. It's a pretty cool kid. Not really. Um, but I see that picture and it reminds me of sillier times, of fun times, and it brings me joy. The author of Psalm 77 looks back on his memories too, um, although he doesn't really use a picture album. But he looks back on his memories and he remembers stuff too. In verse 10, he remembers years of God stretching out his right hand. In the Bible, being on the right side as opposed to the left side is um, being in a place of honor the right side. Um, so the psalmist, the author, he's saying that he remembers years where God honored him. In verse 11, he remembers um, God's miracles done long ago. In verse 12, he remembers God's works and God's mighty deeds. And this is when knowing your Bible helps. If you already know it, it's much easier to remember it in difficult times. It also helps if you tell others about what God has done in your life so that it might benefit them too. While they wouldn't have experienced it personally, it can still encourage them and bring them closer to God. In Deuteronomy 6, it talks about how the Israelites were supposed to tell their children um, about how God had rescued them from slavery in Egypt. And um, God actually tells them to pass this news on to their children so that their children will not forget what God has done. In Joshua 4, each tribe of Israel was to gather a rock 
from in the middle of the Jordan as they were crossing it and set these rocks in their camp so that in the future they'd be able to tell their children about how the waters of the Jordan were parted before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. If they just brought the rocks, but didn't tell their kids about why the rocks were there, there would just be a random pile of rocks in the middle of camp, and the children wouldn't know about what God had done for them. If we forget about what God had done in the, has done in the past, it would be so much more difficult to stay hopeful during tough times. Remembering these things helps us stay rooted in our faith. The author of Psalm 77 remembers that God has always been bigger than the problems that he's faced and bigger than the problems that the Israelites faced. And remembering these things leads him to a time of praise. In verses 13 to 15, the author praises God and declares God's holiness, his greatness, his power and his might, and praises God once again for his miracles and his redeeming power shown through the generations that have gone before him. His knowledge of what God has done in the past gives him hope for the future and a reason to continue to praise God. The psalm doesn't end with the author saying that after remembering, he now feels amazing and he's not worried anymore. But it does say that the author has made a decision to remember God's faithfulness. So, kids, I know that you're not in school right now, but here's a language lesson for you. We're going to be talking about verb tenses. Not kids, this will be helpful for you too. So when the author was crying out to God, he used past tense. So it's something that happened in the past. But when he remembers, he actually uses a tense called future progressive tense, which is fan a fancy way of saying that it's a continued action. The author has started to remember and he will continue to remember. It's a choice that he makes. And we can make that choice too. During worship, we sang the song, Blessed Be Your Name. It's a pretty popular worship song and it's also a pretty upbeat song that encourages us to praise God and we sing it very easily. However, it, like Psalm 77, calls us to make a choice. The lyrics say that we are to bless God when the sun is shining and life is abundant. And that's pretty easy to do. It's easy to bless God when everything seems to be going well. But the song also says that we are to bless God when we feel like we're in the desert and the darkness is closing in. The song also says, you give and take away, give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord blessed be your name. Even if we're in a time where God is taking things away or God has taken things away, we can still make that choice to bless the name of the God or sorry, bless the name of, not the God, of God, to bless the name of the Lord. I pray that in times when you're feeling scared or worried or helpless, that you'll remember that God has always proved to be bigger than the problems that you face and that his unfailing love proved time and time again will give you hope for the future and a reason to continue to praise him. I'd like, <clears throat> I'd like to leave you with 
one more song to remind you that God is always there for us. But before we get to that, let's pray. Father God, especially in times like this, where it seems like a lot of things are spinning out of our control, um, that we don't know what's going to happen um, tomorrow, we don't know what's going to happen next week or in a month. Um, we feel scared sometimes. Um, we feel helpless. We feel like we're in the dark. Um, but even amidst these times, in the middle of these times, help us to remember the things that you've done in the past, um, the good things that you've done, the times that you've shown us that you are a good and loving God, a faithful God, a God that keeps his promises. And I pray that it would be these things that you've done in our lives that you've done in the lives of the people around us, that you've done in the Bible, um, that these things would give us hope for the future and help these things to be um, things that we continue to praise you for. I pray that these things would give us hope, that they would encourage us and help us not to feel so afraid because we know that you are bigger than our problems. You are bigger than this disease uh, and that you will continue to provide for us and continue to take care of us. I pray that you would continue to keep us, um, keep us safe, keep us in good health. I pray that you would continue to watch over us and may this be a time where we grow closer to you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So when I'm lying in my bed and the furniture starts creeping, I'll just laugh and say, hey, cut that out and get back to my sleeping because I know that God's the biggest and he's watching all the while. So when I get scared, I'll think of him and close. TV. Well, that's okay, because now I know that God is taking care of me. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman. And he's watching out for you and me. One more time. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord, our rescuer. There is good news for the captive. Good news for the shamed. There is good news for the one who walked away. There is good news for the doubter, the one religion failed. For the good Lord has come to seek and save. He's our rescuer. He's our we are free from sin 
is pasture for the weary, rest for those who strive. Oh, the good Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, the good Lord. Welcome to our online service here at MCBC. If you're here for the very first time, uh, we would love to get to know you and to share a little bit more about all the things that are going on at MCBC. So at the bottom of the page, if you want to fill in your details under the contact section, uh, we would love to have somebody get in touch with you. Uh, after the service, there's going to be a time of chit-chat and also Sunday school. Uh, we encourage everybody to join so that we can fellowship with one another and to uh, to learn and to see how everybody else is doing. Uh, just a few announcements this week. Uh, firstly, for 2019 tax receipt, um, those can be found on the MCBC website, mcbc.com. Uh, next, we have uh, donations to the hospitals. Uh, currently, right now, we know there's a great need um, at the hospitals, so if you would love to donate, uh, both either financially or uh, through medical supplies, the details are on the screen above. Next, uh, for any of those brothers or sisters who uh, have caring needs or uh, have prayer requests or love to be contacted uh, by a pastor, um, Please uh, get in contact with us um, and we would love to have somebody uh, get in touch with you to be able to care for you and to support you uh, however the church can. Nextly, uh, the church is still accepting offering uh, either through e-transfer or through uh, check so that um, you can take a look at the screen um, and those details are there. VBC uh, will still be running um, August 10th to 21st this year, hopefully. Um, so registration is still open at the moment. Um, and so all the uh, details for campers and the cost is also in the screen.
We also want to just let everybody know that the church is going to continually update the um, church uh, news in terms of the COVID-19 and how we are dealing with that. Um, so there's a link above if you want to continue uh, checking that. Uh, the latest updates will be on there. Uh, that's all the announcements for this week. Uh, we want to just uh, have hope everybody has a great week. Uh, stay safe and we will see you again next week.